G'day everyone. I want to give you a little game here. How would you get that bronze hand pointing to the various shapes in the sky? So if I come and click on this little cube, up she goes. What about the sphere? Oh yeah, and the cone. Well there you go, in Planet Coaster 2 you can get some custom angles and advanced movements. So that's what this tutorial is going to be all about. We're going to look at how you can do that, plus a few more. And uh, yeah, some practical tips too for your roller coasters, doors that stay open, all the fun stuff as usual. So remember, don't point, it's rude, and <laughs> we'll get straight into it. Alright, to kick things off, let's create a offset animation. So. If you ever create a motion panel like this one and pick quarter oscillate or one of the other options under the type, you are sort of limited to that pre-baked animation. So you can come in, grab a rotational platform, set something like uh, one of these new very slow options, set it to on trigger. Then you can duplicate the whole thing, make sure your align and snaps are on, attach it and it should snap into position. Once it's placed you can select it with the advanced move and rotate and flip it 180. And now what's happening is you've got the same animation rotating in opposite directions and that's going to give you some control. So we take our sequencer and we add both those motors like so. And it might be useful to just separate them slightly or rename the final one. So I like to call it something like attach me. And now if I take this hand and attach it to attach me and we just position that like so. If I play this, nothing's going to happen because the two motors are countering each other out. And the nice thing about those new animation types is they are rather linear, so there's no wobble or anything. So all we have to do now is uh, turn off that little animation, stop it, and come into our sequencer. And if we offset this just a little bit, the first animation will start to move and then the other one will start to counter it. So you can see it will rotate just a little bit. Now, if I just speed this up so we get the full effect here, and if I take that a little bit further this time and try again, it'll actually rotate further. And you can keep doing that all the way right up to something like this. And as you can see, we are controlling the distance, and we're also getting a very nice pause. So we're getting a pause on a rotation that we don't normally get. So we can go ahead and make this into a door that opens and has a longer extended time. So let's look at that. Okay, so here's our little train. And what I've done is I've set up a trigger. So create a trigger. And it's set to just before the door to play this sequencer. And the sequencer is loading these two animations. Now the problem is the doors slam back in their face far too quickly. So if you have a look at the oscillation that I'm using, a quarter oscillate, which gives a nice opening effect, but doesn't pause. And that's why I don't like these baked animations. You don't have any control. So let's try and replicate that, that, that motion that we like with our two motor setup. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to take this door. I'm going to attach it to the attach me. And we're going to rotate at 180 get it on its axis point like so and I'm going to attach this two motors to our sequencer we'll just get rid of these other ones and we can in fact delete those two old ones so now as the train comes around and it hits that trigger point this should swing out once I offset these a little bit so let's try that something like that. So we're going to need a bigger gap. So I'll just power through. Probably even more. And one of the nice things is that that door is going to pause as a result of the trigger. So something like that. Yeah, that's a nice angle, isn't it? It's sort of very open. And what we can do is then take this door and I'm going to duplicate it. So control X. And I'm going to flip the whole thing around. So 180. 
like that then I can bring that up like so and then I'm going to go through attaching the scenery so I can select just the door and bring that up we'll get the height just right match it okay and now I can take the whole thing and pull it across and we can line the whole lot by selecting everything and moving it to where we would like to have it on our station and come back to my sequencer and I'm just going to add the other one and we'll give it the same offset what I'll do is I'll just slightly change it just a little bit to give it a bit more character so now what will happen as the train comes through the station it'll hit that trigger point and we will should see the doors swing open and with enough time for the train to pass through before it closes and so you've got a lot more control and if you want to increase that gap well you've got a limitation in how much offset there is in this speed you can try different speeds but the problem is it's only those new animation types the very slow ultra slow very fast ultra fast that are really linear if you use something like slow fast or medium you can still get the same effect but because it's not a linear animation it sort of sort of moves around a little bit and that's some of the trouble i've had in the past but yeah these new ones give us a lot more control so i think for slow this kind of thing a door anyway it works works quite well let's go another game okay there you go custom door with a pause well not every door has to be a hinge door you could have sliding doors and whatnot but you can also create some interesting things with these uh, offset animation so if I take our band or delete that and we get like a piece of art like maybe a triangle shape might be the way to go or even just a square I'll go with a triangle just to show you what that looks like and attach it to our touch me and we will just put it out here somewhere and I want to line that up actually a bit better so it's going to rotate like so and we can just get it aligned like that and then we can take a scenery uh, sorry a sequencer and attach it like so and just test this so we'll go about there and then that should rotate out like that yep and then I'm gonna take this and duplicate it and rotate it 180 so I'll, actually I'll put my snap on and then pull that out to about there and then I'm going to take both of those and rotate them again and again and now with this uh, sequencer I'm going to just add all of them I'm going to delete those and then start again so I'll just add all of them because I've got the labeling I can see the attach me's are going to go about there you need to get them right and once they're all lined up basically made like a little spaceship portal sometimes if you zoom in it's easier to do this but uh, I'll just do that for now with the actual editor okay and if we press play, we should get a cool um, portal effect, like so. Yeah, sure, that looks cool. All right, so, and then if you want to, you can color these differently and whatnot. But I like to put a pipe or something around there. So we'll grab a pipe, something like that, and put it in the center. So we'll just move that around and uh, bury well actually we'll rotate the whole lot how about that like so and move the pipe in see what our little little door looks like now and obviously you cover all that up with some other scenery there you go little portal that's cool and yeah you can sequence that for rides and roller coasters to go through or whatever else you want to do 
So that's your way, a way to do a, another type of door using these paused rotations. So what else can you do with offset animation? So this time I've got the same setup, but instead of a door, just a pink uh, piece of heart shape. And I've using the oscillate medium animation on both the triggers or the motors rather. And if I hit play on this, you're going to see it just wobbles back and forth. And that's because of the offset. So I can decrease that offset and get a little wiggle. And that works quite nicely. Um, or I could create a bigger one and that'll give me the same thing. So try that again, much bigger. So it's pretty fin uh, finicky, you gotta figure it out. But that's how I've made a lot of my more complicated animations, just figuring out different combinations. So what you can do with something like that is you can duplicate the whole lot then come back and move it and then attach it to the attach me and uh, then I'm going to just line it up something like that and with my sequencer I'm going to add the new lot and so if we come back here and just to rearrange these and try different combinations we can get some really interesting motions so here's a bit of a insight to how I created my fish animation so if you haven't seen my aquatic uh, video check those out but you can see the fish swaying back and forth and um, yeah you can create multiple sections and attach scenery and once you've got something like that it is actually quite easy to come in and attach scenery right so you could create a wiggly caterpillar on the ground and you'd be wobbling around so Taking that a little bit further over here, I've got a couple more examples. So same animation type, oscillate medium. And when we play this trigger, you get a waving flag. And uh, yeah, you can sort of bury that whole thing in the ground if you like. And uh, yeah, you could even have the flag raising up and down on another trigger. And uh, we'll give you that sort of impression of a flag. And taking, uh, I'll play it, and then taking that a little bit further because that's probably a bit extreme that animation um, you can use something like the quarter oscillate medium and play with the variances in the the overlap so only just a little tiny micro movement here and uh, yeah that'll create just a very subtle movement again used for fish or anything else that needs to wriggle along like a flag so yeah just by experimenting with the variety of offsets that are available, you can add a whole new range of animation. So hopefully that's useful. So another type of animation we can create is a very subtle bounce or, or a bob in the water. So I'm going to take the new uh, animation type for these sliders, the very slow up to down. And if uh, I just grab that and then attach it and snap it into place, and we use the same trick, right? A 180 flip. And we can just take this whole thing up like so. And I'm going to make sure I name this so I can select it. So this is the attach me. And we create a sequencer like so. And we add both of these. So just the same. But unlike the rotation panels, which are linear, when you offset these, you're going to just basically repeat the animation in a smaller scale. So I can take the attachment just a very subtle amount. And uh, I need to reset this, just bring it back here, just off a, off a little bit. And I take something like a barrel. So we'll just find that in the scenery here, barrel. And attach it to me, like so. And then rotate it like that. Now when I press play, it's basically a scaled version of the animation. So it's going to come up and down and then rest in the neutral. So yeah, throw in a pull. And that's a really nice way to create a very smaller version of that up and down motion. And again, the more you uh, increase that gap, the bigger the scale will be. And the shorter you do it, the more subtle it will be. So yeah, you can get some really nice sort of water effects by doing it that way. Um, I used to do it with a, two rotators, but I think this is a little bit more elegant. So that's another option for you. Hey, well, thanks for sticking around to the end, guys. It is a pleasure creating these tutorials for you. I really hope you like it. And if you did, 
please consider giving a thumbs up and a subscribe if you're not already. My commitment to you is to keep producing awesome tutorials and giving you as much uh, information that I can share as possible. So stick around and one day I might even make a park. <laughs> hey, and uh, yeah, just lastly, don't forget you can put sequences under the ground to make these sort of interactions. Isn't that cool? Um, yeah, no doubt you guys will come up with some more interesting activities than this one. <laughs> Until then, hope you have a great week. Cheers, everyone. Bye.